All right, well, uh, welcome back and uh, welcome to another tutorial in Maya. This time, as you can see, I have now switched to Maya 2011 and this is the new interface and we're going to take a look at that in a few minutes, but I want to take a chance here to say thank you to all my subscribers. Um, we are now close to 100 subscribers um, strong on YouTube, so that's really kind of a cool thing. Um, as you'll notice, I have this new 2011 and the, uh, the interface looks a lot different. Um, you'll notice that uh, it has kind of a nice gray, kind of gooey. <laughs> so it looks really nice and essentially it's about the same as 2009, maybe even 2010. Um, they've changed a couple of things, but for the most part it's cosmetic and it's for, um, and it's, it's really more for uh, aesthetics than anything else. So I'm finding this to be very cool. So at the moment, uh, you can see where it's changed there and I now have over 100 subscribers on YouTube. And um, also, out of those 100 subscribers on YouTube, uh, we have about 15% that are females. Um, I noticed that on my statistics that, uh, that come in through YouTube that we have about a 15, 16% um, viewership from the female crowd, so bravo. Uh, welcome ladies and uh, I hope you learn just as much as the guys <laughs> or more. Okay so let's take a look at the last uh, section here. Um, so far overall I have had 25,000 views on all of my videos so the tutorials are working and I hope you're all learning something so there you go. Uh, let's take a look at this interface real quick before I go anywhere. Um, I've been sort of upgrading. I upgraded my computer system and I've also upgraded um, you know, to Maya 2011 which is a 64-bit application now. And it, this is the Mac version and it looks great. Um, as you can see uh, they've kind of changed the interface a little bit here and you know essentially everything is about the same they changed the icons for say like the little textured render view or your lights or your your uh, uh, wireframe on shaded they look a little bit different but essentially it's not that much different than uh, what it was before so as you can see I've just got some some text down here it looks about the same we'll do a little spin around there um, the icons look a little different for the tools in some cases, but you know, for the most part, uh, that's it. It looks pretty good. So, tell you what we're going to do. Um, today we're going to address an issue with Maya 2011 um, concerning the flow path. So, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just create a new scene. And um, we're going to do uh, a little bit of work with the flow path in Maya 2011. So first thing we should probably do is, is go ahead and create some text. So I'm just going to create some text and we're going to call this, uh, uh, we're going to call it flow path. Flow path Maya 2011. Okay. And uh, we'll just go ahead and leave the bevel on there and we're going to create it at the start and uh, let's just hit create. All right, and you'll see it show up down there where you should, and uh, there it is. Let's put a little bit of, little bit of that around it. So now I have some text. Uh, real quickly, let's just create a NURBS primitive circle. I'm going to go to that circle right there, choose it, click on the grid, and open that thing up to about right there. Not really too concerned about what's going on yet, but let's do this. Come over here and make sure that you're in your animation menu set. And we're going to animate this. So let's choose the uh, let's choose the text first, always, and then let's choose that path. And then what I want to do is come to animate. I want to go down to your motion paths, and we're going to basically attach it to a motion path first. Okay. So there it is at the motion path. And if I play this, well, you'll see it's going to go around really fast. <laughs> and that's because I only have 24 frames set here so let's do this correctly uh, let's uh, go ahead and just do a command Z or an undo let's just do an undo there and let's just do another undo um, and before we actually attach these two together let's set up our um, let's set up our timeline for about say 400 frames okay 
And now we can choose our text and we then we can choose the uh, motion path. Come to animate, come down here to motion paths and attach to motion path. Well, now you can see where that's going to pretty much take about 400 frames to go all the way around. And that's just what we want. So let's come back here. Um, next, what we're going to want to do is uh, deselect everything and then go ahead and select the text again and then select your flow path or your path and we're going to come up here to animate and come down to motion paths and this time we're going to choose flow path object and as we do that let's go ahead and open up our um, our options box here and as you can see this says divisions front four up to side two we want it to go around the curve and we want to have a local effect and then here's our local effect settings okay so I'm just gonna hit flow and we're gonna see what happens here um, immediately it looks strange okay and this isn't typically the way it would have shown up in uh, Maya 2009 um, on the default settings but the default settings sometimes in Maya for 2011 I found are kinda wonky so in this case the default setting is just leaving us with Oh, say a triangle right here and that's not really what we want okay so let's come over here and look for our lattice history and we can see where we have some divisions right here and it's set at four right now well let's play around with this for a minute and let's put say five divisions in okay and click like a, and I find this awfully wonky too is that sometimes when you click in here and you set a value you can click out here and it doesn't necessarily deactivate any of this stuff and you know that really kind of peeves me because if I click on an open area of a window I really want it to take hold and I want to see that change take place well anyway this is part of the wonkiness of Maya in 2011 that I'm, I'm beginning to find so if you click in here in the view anywhere you can see where that updates and now because I typed in five divisions it looks something like that okay it's like a square and if I play this you're gonna see where it, it just doesn't look right you know all that text should be contained within a motion path and it technically shouldn't be a square because we're looking for a circle <laughs> okay uh, it should be in a circle so let's fix that um, to start with we want to look at this number of divisions right now it's at five I'm gonna go ahead and set those divisions to say 15 and I'm gonna click there or click down here okay so now you can see where it's starting to look like a circle because we have more divisions and those divisions are all sort of being defined by this circle so let's up those divisions quite a bit so we can get a little bit better look on our geometry let's take those divisions up to oh, let's say 360 maybe let's take it to 360 all right and I'm gonna click anywhere in there and now you can see where we have like a, a lot going on around there. We have 360 divisions around a basically a 360 degree arc. So that's cool. Um, we may want to take that down a little bit. We may not need it that high, but in some cases you might um, because you may want to adjust a lots of these lattice points. So for the moment, let's just take this back down to say something like 72 or something. Um, I'm going to type in the 72 there click in another box there okay now you can see where it it basically has the shape we want it to and you know the text is still outside of the box okay well we're gonna have to fix that first so let's go back to the beginning here and let's look at what's happening over here what you want to look for is is your base and well actually depending on what you're you're doing um, you, you're gonna notice several different options over here for your shape okay and your your FFD one and uh, you know the base and this will give you some various places to say change some attributes but really what we're interested in right now is let's go to our, our outliner okay and choose that outliner and in the outliner you're going to notice that you have you know some different choices over here based on what you've already created and in this case I want to go to this um, this FFD1 base and you can see where it's highlighted there because I have it clicked if I come down here a little bit I'm going to choose that base shape now okay and 
Now what I can do is sort of change this, the relative size of this with our scale tool. And in this case, I'm just going to scale everything up. So I'll click on that scale tool, grab it in the middle, left mouse button, and just sort of give it some more, some more width there. And you can see what happens. It, it, it'll actually get to a point when you pull it out far enough that it's going to contain the text. Okay, so that's kind of what we want. And in this case, I might even just grab one of these and give it a little bit more, a little bit more size around there. And there you go. Okay, so I'm going to hide the outliner for a second. I'm going to put that down in there. And we're going to take a look at how the animation plays. I'll sort of click that on and let's watch it. Yeah, it's about a 400 frame animation. And, you know, this, this lattice and base system for Maya 2012 or 2011, um, you'll see where, okay, all of a sudden we have something wonky going on there. Well, I've never been able to quite figure this out. Um, it, it, <laughs> this is sort of the mystery of, of the lattice. Um, I, I, 20, 2009 was kind of the same way. So if anyone out there has a clue as to how to get this to conform completely, well, let me know. But in a moment, we'll take a look at some ways we can try and minimize that. Uh, for the moment. So anyway, let's bring this out a little bit or bring this in a little bit there and let's click on our, our base node. I'm going to come back down to the outliner and I want to choose that base again. Okay, we'll choose that base right there and I'm, I'm going to stretch it out a bit more and we're going to take a look at it over here. Uh, let's look at what, what we have here. We have a flow attributes where the lattice, let's put the lattice on the object and see what happens, okay? If you click there and you can see where, you know, the lattice is around the object and it's doing really strange things, so technically we don't want that, all right? But that's what it'll do. The um, lattice on object will change the lattice and actually attach it to, you know, the texture geometry that you have there. So I'm going to take that off, rewind it back to the beginning. And let's take a look at this option over here under FFD1. Um, right now it's saying that it's it's local, and that's cool. Um, and you'll notice that if we uncheck local, um, it, it sort of changes a little over here. It, it sort of, uh, well, see what happens? I'm going to click that, but watch this as I click. I'm going to click now, and it just sort of um, fell down a little bit on more onto the line. Um, if we bring that up to the end, we can see where we still have problems with it going outside. Okay, so that's not good. So I'm going to click local back on. And in this case, outside lattice, I'm, instead of setting it to the inside, I'm going to just set it to all and see what happens. So there it is on all. I'm going to move this over. Let's do a play. And there it is. And you can see where it's going to go all the way around. And when it gets up to about this point right here, I'm going to hit play. You can see where it, it didn't quite go outside of the, uh, the base node. But you can see where, where as it goes around, it, it actually sort of corrects itself. Um, and so this is a way to smooth that end transition right there. You can see there it snapped back into place. So this is kind of some of the wonkiness that you're going to encounter with um, the flow path in Maya uh, 2011. And um, as you can see, there's a various ways you can mess around with some of these settings over here um, to maybe give you a little bit better result. I myself just sort of set this um, effect up to use the text as it's coming through in the front. So, you know, essentially I wouldn't really need it back there. And um, if I go up here and we'll play on the word there, and as you can see, it goes through nicely and uh, looks like a flow path. So there you go. Um, hope you learned something. And um, thanks again for all your kind comments. And uh, we'll get on with some more uh, tutorials here in uh, Maya 2011 so real soon. So thanks for watching. And as always, read a book, <laughs> learn something. All right. Thanks for watching.